St. Basil's Church on the campus of the University of St. Michael's College in downtown Toronto, the National Catholic Broadcasting Council presents Daily Mass. The televising of today's Mass is made possible by a contribution from an anonymous donor in Scarborough, Ontario. This Mass is offered in memory of her husband, who passed away on November the 14th, 2010. In choosing to remember your husband in this way, you are joined by thousands of people across Canada who take part in this Mass, and for that, we thank you. We celebrate the Feast of St. Josephat, the Ukrainian martyr. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, Amen. may the strength and power of God be with you all. Amen. A martyr's feast takes us out of ourselves. We're willing to endure something to remain faithful to God. So when we feel weak and unable maybe to live up to our aspirations, let us ask God's strength and forgiveness. Lord Jesus, you raise us to new life. Lord, have mercy. Lord Jesus, you forgive our sins. Christ, have mercy. Lord Jesus, you feed us with your body and blood. Lord, have mercy. May Almighty God have mercy on us forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. Let us pray. Lord, fill your church with the spirit that gave St. Joseph courage to lay down his life for his people. By his prayers, may your spirit make us strong and willing to offer our lives for our brothers and sisters. Grant this through Christ our Lord. Amen. A reading from the Book of Wisdom. While gentle silence enveloped all things, and the night in its swift course now half gone, your all-powerful word leaped from heaven, from the royal throne, into the midst of the land that was doomed. A stern warrior carrying the sharp sword of your authentic command and stood and filled all things with death, and touched heaven while standing on the earth. For the whole creation in its nature was fashioned anew, complying with your commands, so that your children might be kept unharmed. The cloud was seen overshadowing the camp, and a dry land emerging where water had stood before, an unhindered way out of the Red Sea and a grassy plain out of the raging water waves, where those protected by your hand passed through as one nation after gazing on your marvelous wonders. For they ranged like horses and leaped like lambs, praising you, O Lord, who delivered them. The word of the Lord. Remember the marvels the Lord has done. Remember the marvels the Lord has done. Sing to the Lord, sing praises to him. Tell of all his wonderful works. Glory in his holy name. Let the hearts of those who seek the Lord rejoice. Remember the marvels the Lord has done. He struck down all the firstborn in their land. 
the first issue of all their strength. Then he brought Israel out with silver and gold, and there was no one among their tribes who stumbled. We For he remembered his holy promise and Abraham his servant. So he brought his people out with joy, his chosen ones with singing. Hallelujah, 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 hallelujah. God has called us with the gospel to share in the glory of our Lord Jesus Christ. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Luke. Jesus told his disciples a parable about their need to pray always and not to lose heart. He said, In a certain city there was a judge who neither feared God nor had respect for people. In that city there was a widow who kept coming to him and saying, Grant me justice against my opponent. For a while the judge refused, but later he said to himself, Though I have no fear of God and no respect for anyone, yet because this widow keeps bothering me, I will grant her justice so that she may not wear me out by continually coming. And the Lord said, Listen to what the unjust judge says. And will not God grant justice to his chosen ones who cry to him day and night. Will he delay long in helping them? I tell you, he will quickly grant justice to them. And yet, when the Son of Man comes, will he find faith on earth? The Gospel of the Lord. Praise Take uh, today's readings together and you get two very different ways by which God makes his presence felt in our world and in our own lives. When we asked the catechism question, where is God? The answer came out, God is everywhere. So then it becomes a question, not so much of where is God, but how do we allow God into our lives? How do we get God's attention? The first reading suggests that we allow a gentle silence to envelop us. Busyness, worrying, planning, talking, chatting, going here, going there, catching up on the phone, in front of the TV, there are so many ways we can keep busy, keep chatter and noise alive in our days, and sometimes, I'm sure, through our nights. And as a result, God finds us preoccupied, maybe, 
absorbed, distracted, or maybe wrapped up in ourselves. No room for me there, God says, and moves on. How about letting a gentle silence envelop us? How about time out from doing and going? How about do nothing time every so often? How about the answer the curé of ours got when he asked a poor old man who came to his church every day and sat there at the back and then after a few minutes he got up and left and the curé of ours asked him, what do you do each time you come here? And that man said, I look at him and he looks at me. I look at Jesus on the cross and he looks at me. The Book of Wisdom uh, reminds its readers of the, the crossing of the Red Sea in the middle of the night. The waves parted and a dry passageway invited the slaves to cross into freedom on the other bank of the River Nile. God brought them through the waters and so they ranged like horses, they leaped like lambs, they praised God who had delivered them from slavery. And then our gospel story. Our gospel story reminds us that just waiting, uh, hanging around, is not always the best way to get God's attention. And Jesus tells the story of the judge and the persistent woman. This judge had a severe reputation. He didn't fear God and he had no respect for people either. But there was a persistent widow who wanted justice against an opponent, probably a, a rich, influential man, over some legal issue or other that they, that they contested. But then the judge didn't want to have anything to do with her, and he was supposed to be the defender of widows and orphans. When she didn't get through to judge the first time, she kept coming. She refused to take no for an answer. Grant me justice against my oppressor. Grant me justice against my opponent. She had no husband to act on her behalf in a very man-to-man -man patriarchal society. She would have to pursue this justice all by herself. And I suppose, wearied out by her coming day and night, the judge finally gave in. I'll grant her justice and get her out of my life. She wore him down by her constant requests. And Jesus seems to say that God may need to be worn down, that we may need to keep coming back until we get God's attention. And maybe God not giving us immediately what we're asking for is his way of getting us to come back, to keep coming back. But then our gospel doesn't end there. There's a final few lines. Luke begins it by saying, and yet, a question in Luke's mind. When the Son of Man comes, when he shows up, will he find faith on earth? Will his followers remain faithful over the long haul? So the question sort of hangs there a little bit as we finish today's gospel. Neither Jesus nor God the Father are going to force themselves into your life or into my life. If they're not welcomed, they'll go someplace else. And wouldn't that be a tragedy? God came into my life and I shut the door on him. God came into my life and I wasn't present. I was someplace else. 
please God, that won't happen to any of us. For all who feel alone with no one to help them, we pray to the Lord. For those who hunger for food and drink or for friendship and support, we pray to the Lord. For newcomers to our country, refugees and street people, we pray to the Lord. For the intentions of those who, has, who have asked us to pray for them at these TV Masses, we pray to the Lord. And for all Ukrainian Catholics on this Feast of St. Josephat, we pray to the Lord. Gracious and loving God, we ask your blessing. May we never walk alone, and may we be there for others in their need. Amen. Blessed are you, Lord, God of all creation. Through your goodness we have this bread to offer, which earth has given and human hands have made. It will become for us the bread of life. Blessed are you, Lord, God of all creation. Through your goodness we have this wine to offer. Fruit of the vine, work of human hands, it will become our spiritual drink. Let us pray that our offering of Eucharist today may be acceptable to God, our Almighty Father. God of mercy, pour out your blessings upon these gifts and make us strong in the faith which St. Joseph had professed by shedding his blood. We ask this in the name of Jesus, our risen Lord. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Lift up your hearts. Lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. Right to you. Father, all powerful and ever living God, we do well always and everywhere to give you thanks. You give the church this feast in honor of St. Joseph. You inspire us by his holy life, instruct us by his preaching, and give us your protection in answer to his prayers. We join the angels and the saints as they sing their unending hymn of praise. Lord, you are holy indeed, the fountain of all holiness. Let your spirit come upon these gifts to make them holy, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. Before he was given up to death, a death he freely accepted, he took bread and gave you thanks. He broke the bread, gave it to his disciples and said, take this all of you and eat it, this is my body, which will be given up for you. O 
When supper was ended, he took the cup. Again, he gave you thanks and praise, gave the cup to his disciples and said, take this, all of you, and drink from it. This is the cup of my blood, the blood of the new and everlasting covenant. It will be shed for you and for all so that sins may be forgiven. Do this in memory of me. Let us proclaim this mystery of faith. Dying, you destroyed our death. Rising, you restored our life. Lord Jesus, come in glory. In memory of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Father, this life-giving bread, this saving cup. We thank you for counting us worthy to stand in your presence and serve you. May all of us who share in the body and blood of Christ be brought together in unity by the Holy Spirit. Lord, remember your church throughout the world. Make us grow in love together with Benedict, our Pope, and all our bishops. Remember our brothers and sisters who have gone to their rest in the hope of rising again. Bring them and all the departed into the light of your presence. Have mercy on us all. Make us worthy to share eternal life with Mary, the Virgin Mother of God, with the apostles and with all the saints who have done your will throughout the ages. May we praise you in union with them and give you glory through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him, with him, in him, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours, Almighty Father, forever and ever. We pray now as Jesus taught his disciples to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, from every evil, and grant us peace in our day. In your mercy, keep us free from sin and protect us from all anxiety as we wait in joyful hope for the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. Lord Jesus Christ, you said to your apostles, I leave you peace, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church and grant us the peace and unity of your kingdom where you live forever and ever. Amen. May the peace of the Lord be with you always. Amen. Let us offer to those near us a sign of that peace. Behold the Lamb of God who takes away the sin of the world. Blessed are those invited to communion with him. Lord, I am not worthy to receive you, but only say the word and I shall be healed.
With those of you at home, join with me now in a prayer by Father J. Bourgeau of North Bay. He calls it quiet time. Lighting the candle this morning, I sit quietly before it. This is time set aside for God and me to be together. I wait in stillness. I listen. God listens. God is never too busy to listen. My heart is open. I come empty. I come in hope. I come in need to be made anew. Come, Lord. Your presence is creative, life-giving. Cleanse and refresh me. Encourage and strengthen me for the day ahead. Thank you for our time together. Amen. Let us pray. Lord, may this Eucharist we have shared fill us with your spirit of courage and peace. Let the example of St. Josephine inspire us to spend our lives working for the honor and unity of your church. Grant this through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. Amen. May Almighty God bless you, the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Let us go from this Mass in the peace of Christ. Our thanks to an anonymous donor from Scarborough, Ontario, whose generous contribution made the televising of today's Mass possible. Oh God, On behalf of Father Bush, Father Coots, Father Fitzpatrick, Father Donovan, Father Lynch, and all of us here at Daily Mass, our best wishes for a restful weekend, and we'll be looking for you all again. Come on. from Kenora, Ontario. Thanks ever so much for providing such a wonderful ministry of daily Mass, not only for the sick and elderly unable to go to church, but also for those of us still able, but where the parish Masses are during working hours. From Pierrefonds, Quebec, your Mass gives me the courage to get out of bed each day. From Hamilton, Ontario, thanks for the benefits received from Daily Mass. I rarely miss these broadcasts, although I'm a practicing member of the Anglican Church, the similarity of the Mass is very comforting to me. Thank you, sincerely. Voices from across the country, your voices, voices of faith that are an inspiration to all of us.